What's up guys, ATCG here, welcome back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck of the Day. Today we have a UA deck profile. We've never really covered Ultra Athletes in this channel before because the deck was not really that competitive, that viable. It was only seeing playing in Duel Links, but now with Phantom Raids, the deck got some really good support. And with their typing being Warrior and having the ability to abuse some of the best Link Masters right now in the game, I think the deck, if you're a fan of it, you have a really good chance of competing because the deck has tools for going first to build up negations and has tools for breaking board as well for going second. Second, so it has a little bit of everything. So it's a really, really good and fun deck. So if you enjoy this deck profile, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our upcoming videos. And now let's get to the deck profile. So to start off, we play the two level four monsters in the deck. We have three copies of UA midfielder. So the UA monsters have a lot in common. First of all, they can only special summon themselves with their effects once per turn. So this is something to keep in mind. And also you can special summon them, most of them, by returning a UA monster you control to the hand. So you can summon midfielder this way once per turn, but midfielder Fielder, you don't really want to special summon him with his effect, you really want to use his second effect because during either player's turn you can target another UA monster you control, return it to the hand and then you can special summon a monster from your hand with a different name. So this is the way you special summon the big monsters of the field and being able to summon them during your opponent's turn as well is really good because a lot of them pop cards on summon. So midfielder is the one that you want to keep looping on the field in the hand every now and then so you can keep getting more advantage. Next up we have three copies of UA Libero Spiker, has the same thing, you can special summon him once per turn. You can special summon him by returning a UA monster you control to the hand, same thing as midfielder. And also during your opponent's main phase, this is only during the main phase, it's not whenever you want during your opponent's turn, but still it's a quick effect so you can use that. You can shuffle one level 5 or higher UA monster from your hand to the deck and special summon a UA monster from your deck with a different name and then you return this card to your hand. So this gives you access to the from the deck because midfielder you have to have the right monster you want in your hand in order to summon it. This one however, if you don't have the right one you want in your hand, the high level, you can just put it back and then special summon the right one you have in the deck. So so having these two monsters and looping them over and over again is the way you get a lot of monsters on the field because if you don't have access to these two then you cannot really summon the high level monster so it's really important that you conserve your resources and make sure these two keep coming back to your hand every turn. Now let's go to the high level monsters. First we have three copies of UA Playmate Playing Manager. So if you summon a UA monster you can special summon this card from your hand so it's a high level monster you can just get itself on the field without having to rely on one of the low levels to summon it and if it's special summoned you can activate one of these effects so it either destroys a card on the field or it negates all face-up monsters on the field that are not UA monsters. So the second effect is actually really, really good because you can just negate a whole board of effects and if you summon it during your opponent's turn, you can basically use the disruption effect. So it has both things in it. So you can either disrupt your opponent when you summon a UA monster during your opponent's turn or during your own turn, you can basically dark ruler no more their entire field. It can get negated, but still it's an effect that your opponent has to deal with, otherwise they won't be able to deal with anything else afterwards. Next up, we have three copies of UA Perfect Ace. You can special summon this by returning a UA monster to the hand. You can special summon it once per turn, same thing as the others. And once per turn during your opponent's turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can discard what card, negate the activation and destroy it. So basically it's a normally negate, it's a really really good card. So the high level monsters are the ones that you want to have during your opponent's turn on the field because they are the ones that disrupt your opponent. And they do not really recycle themselves, so that's why you need to play a lot of copies. If you could recycle them very consistently that you can run away with playing like two or one copies of this, but I think these two you have to max out, mainly because their effects are really really good. And I do play two one-offs, so we have one copy of UA Rival Rebounder. Again, you special summon this by returning a UA to the hand, and if this card is special summoned by your opponent's turn, or when it's normal summon, but usually you will just special summon during your opponent's turn, you can special summon a UA from your hand or your grave. So this one gives you back monsters that have been destroyed. You can use this effect during your own turn if you normal summon this, but it's not really very optimal to tribute a monster to summon this out. You just want to special summon during your opponent's turn. And the last UA monster is one copy of UA Mighty Slugger. You can special summon this by returning a UA troll to the hand, and if this card attacks, it's basically an Armadus. Your opponent can activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step. I really like this card mainly because there are some decks that have some effects like Melee Seek against Altergeist. It gives you some kind of utility, so playing a one-off because it's searchable, it's not really that bad just to cover some more matchups. Now, I play some engine monsters that help you with engines like Isolde because they're all warriors and Needle Fiber because you can go in that very easily. So I play one copy of Grappler Angler. This card is basically the one monster you're summoning with Isolde and after you summon Isolde, you go into Link Ross to get to your tokens. Play one copy of Violent Cube because this card gives you some of your equip spells so you can have more extenders. One copy of Dragon Buster Distraction Sword, as long as this card is still around, a lot of decks can use it, so by equipping this to a Sabbat with your Union Carrier, you basically win the game. And one copy of Sour Avis, because with the Link Cross combo, you do go into Herald of the Arclight to go into Dugares, so you special summon it twice. I don't really want to play two Ritual Monsters, so I can search with both Heralds, but just playing this one Sour Avis gives you a search, so the Herald doesn't go completely to waste when it goes to the grave, and this helps you protect one of your monsters from being targeted, maybe from an Impermanence or something like that. And the only Hunt Trap 
copy play in the deck is three copies of Ash Blossom. You can replace this with pretty much anything else you want. You can play Impermanence, you can play Nibiru, pretty much whatever, but I just I'm showing you Ash Blossom here because it's the most generic hunter. For the spells, play three copies of UA Signing Deal. This is the Emergence Teleport of the deck. You special summon a UA from your deck. It has its effects negated and it can be used as Synchro or Exit Material, but not, now it doesn't matter anymore because we just use them for Link, so this restriction doesn't even exist. You do take some damage equal to the monster's level times 300 points, but that's pretty much irrelevant and it's a once per turn, but still a very, very good card and this is the reason you, special, you can special summon the low level monsters very consistently and then you can add them back with your high level monsters and then you can normal summon them again and this way they will have their effects because they are not on the field by signing those effect anymore. For the field spells we play three copies of UA Stadium. If you normal summon a UA you can add a UA monster from your deck to your hand so this gives you the one you need depending on the situation and if a UA monster is special summoned to your side of the field it boosts all your monsters by 500 attack so it's something to give your monsters a little bit of a punch so you can get more attack and this is why I really like Slugger in the deck because it goes up to 2800 attack and having the Armada effect on a 2800 attacker is actually really really good. Play three copies of UA Hyper Stadium. This card is also FA support but I think it's much much better in the UA deck. So when it's activated you can add any UA or FA monster from your deck to your hand or UA Stadium from your graveyard to your hand. So it basically adds you back the field spell if you need that in late game. And what's good about this is you can reveal a field spell in your hand, you pay a thousand, then you normal summon one UA or FA monster in addition to your normal summon. So if you have multiple field spells which you do play six, seven with your terraforming, you can abuse that by using it to normal summon more times before you actually replace the field spell with another one. So this card is really really good, it gets you the monster you need, it gets you back your field spell during the late game, it's a really good card. One copy of terraforming to search both field spells, one reinforcement of the army to search midfielder and spiker, three foolish burial goods because there is a trap in this deck that has a very very good graveyard effect which I'm, I will go to a little bit later. And for the equip spells play one copy of living fossil, one overdone burial. I really like overdone burial in this deck because you do play a lot of high level monsters and sometimes they can get a bit loggy so you can just discard one of them to get a monster back in the grave and one copy of DDR. And the only trap in the deck is two copies of UA penalty box. So this card has a field effect that it says at the start of the damage step if your UA battles an opponent's monster you can banish that opponent's monster until your opponent's second end phase. This is not a bad effect but what you really do use this card for is with foolish burial goods because you can banish this from your graveyard to add a UA spell card from your deck to your hand. So you basically can add your signing deal or both of your field spells. So this is really good having the three copies of foolish burial goods in the deck gives the deck a lot of searchability. For the extra deck have the link monsters first, one copy of Assault because they're all warriors, so in any warrior deck I think you should be using Assault because she is such a powerful card. One copy of Needle Fiber, still as long as we have the Needle Fiber Link Cross combo we're going to keep using it. And what's cool about this deck is that you actually keep Needle Fiber on the field after you do your combo because you don't summon Link Cross of your Fiber, you summon it of your Assault. So then you go into your Fiber and then you can use Fiber's second effect during your opponent's turn to have extra more disruption. One copy of Link Cross to get your tokens, one copy of Union Carrier to equip your Buster Distraction Sword. For the Nightmares play one Phoenix and one Unicorn and one Boral Sword and one boar load to deal with stuff. For the synchro monsters, we'll play two copies of Hero of the Arc Light because you, you do this with your violent cube combo so you can summon both of them the film, then overlay them into Dugaris, and then get Dugaris' effect as well as getting a surge for your Sour Abyss when you detach your Herald. One copy of Savage Dragon because it's part of the Needle Fiber combo. And for the monsters that Needle Fiber can summon during your opponent's turn, I play actually a lot of them because I think they do have a lot of utility in certain matchups. So I do play one Desert Locust because this one is like one that hand loops one card in your opponent's hand, one copy of Wonder Magician because I can pop one of your opponent's spell and traps, and one Riser Dragon because it's manipulates its level and sends some from the deck to the grave. And the last monster in the extra deck is one to Garus because like I said you use two copies of Herald of the Arclight, you detach and then you can basically can get his Monster Reborn effect or if you don't need it you can just dig for something else and then get a search of your Sour Abyss with your Herald. If you can play two copies of Sour Abyss if you want to search both of them with your Heralds but you don't really need to, just one is basically what you need.
So yep, that's the deck guys, it's a really really good deck, it finally has a win condition, it's finally playable. Now that Konami doesn't really follow an anime in its main sets, we're going to get support for basically whatever deck Konami thinks up their mind. So if you're a fan of anything, do not get disappointed because your deck will eventually get support like this deck. Nobody expects UA support in the near future, but we get it and we're going to get a lot more good cards for a lot of decks. So yep, that's the deck guys, if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our upcoming videos and we'll see you next time.